Welcome back to this PyCOS demo videos. Today we will do some much more advanced things with PyCOS development environment. My name is Jose Almeida, I'm technical sales director at Cisco, and today in this video I will focus on mixed criticality applications. In order to really make this demonstrative, I will take some extremes, so I will try to run a Linux application next to it and a Ring 653 critical application. Before starting the demo, I would like to give you some of the key messages and key features that I'm using from PyQuest in order to create this configuration. Well, first of all, PyQuest is certified, okay, and it meets the odd real-time requirements. This is one of the key messages here, because what we will be doing is using the determinism and the capability to certify an Ring 652 application. However, next to it, we'll also use embedded virtualization, and inside one partition, we'll be actually running Linux, which is quite unusual in the avionics domain. Of course, this demo is about mixed criticality, because what I will do is I will run inside one partition one Linux, which is something which typically cannot be certified. Well, it can be actually certified, but not to very interesting levels of certification. It's used for low level certification. And next to it, on the same hardware platform, I will run something which is very time critical that's typically Apex applications. What type of partition will I use during this demo? I will have a PyQuest native application, which is there only to handle my development tools. Next to it, I will have an Ring 653 application, a very simple one. And then the final one is an Elineos application. Elineos is the embedded Linux distribution developed by Cisco. And in this Linux, I will run a web server. This is how my integration project will look like. We'll have my development tools inside one partition, then a Linux running in user mode. And this is bounded only to use resources which are allocated to this partition. And then my critical application, which is our Ring 653. One other feature that I will use during this demo, even if, it, if I don't mention it explicitly, is time partitioning in order to guarantee a strict separation between my critical Ring 653 application and my Linux application. So, let's start this configuration. What I need are two projects. The first one will be my integration project, the second one will be my Linux project. So let's start with the integration project. I will go and create a new PyQuest project. This will be an integration project, so let's call it PyQuest.int integration. We need to select template, and in this case, I will select DVL Linux because this is the very good starting point. And I also need to select a target, which in my case will be QMU ARM v7. Just finish. My integration project is created. The setup is correct by default, so I don't want to change anything. The next step will be to create my application, which will run in this Linux partition. So again, let's create a new project. And this time, I will use Elineos, which is embedded Linux distribution from Cisco. So let's go. I want to create a Linux file system. I will call it just linux.app. Okay, then the next step is to define what kind of features. In that case, I just want to have a basic thing with shell and maybe a web server just to see if I can access this target. Okay, that should be okay. What board do I want to, to run? I'm actually running on ARM, okay, uh, ARM v7, okay, in secure IO mode meaning that my Linux application will have no direct access to my hardware. Okay, it needs to go through PyQuest in order to access some hardware. What, PyQuest, what kernel version do I want to use? I want to use, I want to use Linux 4.1 for PyQuest 4.1. Okay. 
Let's finish that. Right, my project is created. Let's look at the features that will be used in this project. What I'm really interested in are the PyQuest features. Okay, so what you see here is that in this setup I'm using PyQuest 4.1 and I'm adding a couple of drivers, which are drivers which basically enables accessing directly the PyQuest device drivers. What else? Uh, what about the networking? Okay, so I will have TCP IP setup, mm, driver option, I will enable drivers by default and by default I want to use a PyQuest driver. Okay, PyQuest file provider. The file provider that will be used is ETH0 slash 1. What about the TCP IP settings? I want to have fixed values because I just know what my IP address layout looks like. So the default values 192.168.0.3 are correct as well and the gateway is, is correct as well because this is the way this is actually uh, defined in PyQuest in QME actually. Okay, so this is fine. I can just save this. Next step is of course to build my Linux application. So let's do a make boot here. And this will go, as you see here, through a complete Linux compilation. And not only that, but it will also create the root file system for my Linux. While this is running, I need to do some verification in my Linux process. Now let me get back to my PyQuest integration project and check the Linux options. So let's go to the Linux. What you see here is that, okay, the console of Linux will be on a virtual terminal. I will show you how this works. I have a RAM segment which is defined here, okay. What is more interesting for me are the networking options. As mentioned before, I want to have networking enabled on Linux, so I need to enable this network interface. Okay, and what you see is that okay, I have some problems here because I said I want to have a virtual interface in in Linux, but then I need to define towards which physical interface this is actually connected. And what you should see here is that I need to set up a dependence where I say okay, my Linux will use a virtual channel which is the channel one. Let me just save this and the problem is gone. So now I have a configuration on Linux where I enable access to networking from Linux going through a PyQuest driver. Okay, I can save this. Okay, my Linux should be built now. I need now to build my PyQuest project. Okay, so that's done, and now I need again to create my target simulator. So this will be a Codeo PyQuest. Let's give it a name, which will be just QMU. This will be PyQuest 4.1, and I want to simulate with QMU. This will be my integration with Workspace, which is correct. And the setup for the network is also correct. I can just press Finish. Okay. Now I can run it. So you see first here the PyQuest boot up, and then what you see are some messages which are actually coming from Linux. Okay, this is the early init of Linux. Okay. Now where is the Linux console? The Linux console is actually connected using Muxa. Muxa is a multiplexer, a demultiplexer. The reason for us to use Muxa is this is, in this case, a very simple scenario. You just have one Linux which is running on a target. But what if you have 10 different Linux running in parallel? Where are connected the console? You need some kind of virtual console mechanism. This is what provides you Muxa. Muxa provides a multiplexer of serial links which can be used in order to access any partition. So, what I can do is just connect to my Muxa channel, which is corresponding to Linux, and then I will be able to see the console of Linux. So, let me do that. The simplest way to connect to the Linux console is actually using a telnet 
to a specific localized port, that is this one, which is defined through the MUXA configuration. So now if I do a PS, okay, this is my Linux console, I can now verify that, I can just do a reboot here. And when doing this reboot, what you see is the full Linux messages. Okay, so this was a fairly simple example. We have only one Linux partition which is running inside my integration project. What I will do now is I will redo this again, but I will add one Apex partition which will be executing in parallel to my Linux. And what I want to show you is I can reboot my Linux partition without having any influence at all to the behavior of my Apex application. Okay, so let me do that, add this partition, and then we can also check how this is working. Right, so I've done that offline because this will be a little bit long to go through it during this video. But what I've created is an Apex partition as well as an Apex application which run inside this partition. And what I also did is I created a very simple Apex application which is just an Hello World application. So now I need to build my Apex application, build my integration project, and of course restart my simulation. Right, so you see the messages which are coming here from the Apex application. So if you look at the monitor inside uh, Codeo, you'll see that, okay, now you have the service partition, the Linux partition, as well as the Apex partition. So now let's have a look at the console and see what's happening on Linux. I will connect again to my Linux console. Of course, I can do PS and the only difference that you actually see is, okay, in this example, Apex has a higher priority as well as much more time compared to Linux. So now if I do a reboot, well, you see that Linux is restarting, but it's much slower than before. And you see here that your Apex application is running very, very deterministically, while, of course, Linux will take some more time to, re to, to reboot. You see that compared to the first instance, it's much slower. But you have no influence on the Apex, which is a critical part of your system. Hmm. One more thing. At the beginning of this video, I show you a web server. So let's see if I can actually access my target with a web browser. So let's start Firefox. Firefox is started, right? Now let's just me connect to which is the IP address of my target. Right, so I'm connected to my embedded Linux target. Thank you for watching this video. So you have seen during this video how easy it is to create a mixed criticality application running on PyCOS, both Linux and Apex, which could be replaced, of course, for other domains by different type of personalities. I still have a lot of things to show you around PyQuest, so other videos will be published shortly. In the meantime, please visit the Cisco website www.cisco.com. Thanks again for watching this video.